little shop of horrors, no, oh, oh, no. Shingling, shing, shing, what a creepy thing to be happening. Look out, look out, look out. Look look out. out. Shingling, shing, 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 Something's gonna get her, she better, everybody better beware. Peter! 
Sanctions at the hot dog carts. The bosses take your money and they break your hearts. Uptown you cater to a million more.
remember that total eclipse of the sun just a couple of weeks ago? Daddy. I was walking in the wholesale flower district that day. Shoot, Daddy. And I stopped by this place where this old Chinese man, Chang Daddy. He sometimes tells me weird and exotic cuttings. Snip, Daddy. Cause he knows strange plants are my hobby. Da -da 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 -da. Well, he had nothing unusual there that day. No. And I was about to, you know, walk on by. Good for you. But then suddenly, and without warning, there was this total, total eclipse of the sun. It got very dark, and then I heard a strange humming sound like something from another world. That it and when the light came back, this plant was just sitting there. Oopsie. Uh, mixed in, you know, among the zinnias. Audrey too. I could have sworn it hadn't been there before, but the old Chinese man sold it to me anyway. For a dollar ninety-five. Well, that's an unusual story and a fascinating planet. Oh, I might as well buy. $50 worth of roses while I'm here. Oh, $50. $50? $50? Yes, sir, right away, sir. Can you break a hundred? A hundred? Um, no, I'm afraid we closed the register for the day. All right, then. I guess I'll just have to buy twice as many. Twice as many? Twice as many? Yes, sir, right away, sir. Audrey, my darling, kindly fetch this gentleman $100 worth of our finest red American beauty roses. Thank you very much. Yes, sir, that is one strange and interesting plant. Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Yeah! Well, don't just stand there. Quick, 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 put that plant, what do you call it? An Audrey too. Put that Audrey too in the window where the passers-by can see it. My God, I never had believed it. My children, I am taking us all to dinner. I'd love to, Mr. Mushnick, but I have a date. With the same no good, Nick? I'm telling you, Audrey, you don't need a date with him. You need major medical. He ain't a good, clean kind of boy. He's a professional. What kind of professional drives a motorcycle and wears a black leather jacket? He's a rebel, Mr. Mushnick, but he makes good money. And besides, he's the only fellow I've bought. Enjoy dinner. Good night, Seymour. Good night. <sighs> Poor girl. Are we still going to dinner? You're not going anywhere, grub one. You stand here and take care of that sick plant. How come it's fainting all the time? I don't know. It just wilts like this. The Audrey 2 is not a healthy girl. Strictly between us, neither is the Audrey 1. If only I knew what breed it was, what genus, but it's nowhere in the books. Well, Krell boy, my advice to you is you better figure it out. And fast! Look what this exotic little beauty did for business. I know. So fix. Nurse the plant back to health. I'm counting on you. I know. You do? I do. So fix. Good night. Ah, oh, Chewy. Audrey and Mushnick, they just met you. But we've been going at this for weeks. Grow and wilt, spurt and flop. Are you a sickly little plant, or are you just plain stubborn? What is it that you want? What is it that you need? I've given you sunshine. I've given you dirt. You've given me nothing, but heartache and hurt. I'm begging you sweetly. I'm down on my knees. Oh, please. For me, I've given you plant food and water to sip. I've given you potash, you've given me zip. Oh God, how I missed you! Oh God, how you tease. Now please grow for me. I've given you southern exposure to get you to thrive. I've pinched you back hard like I'm supposed to. You're barely alive. I've tried you at levels of moisture from desert to mud. I've given you grow lights and mineral supplements. What do you want from me, blood? Ow! 
damn roses, stupid thorns. Oh, clumsy me. Hey, Chewie, look what I did. Hey, you opened up. I wonder what made you do that. Now they interview him 
and they clamored to put his remarks on the air. All the world used to hate him, now they started to appreciate him. And all because of that strange little plan over there. Observe him, here's a trap, everything is landing in his lap. I just cut my hand and did a snap. Well, something out of Edgar Allan Poe has happened. Sam Kersap, don't it go to show you never know. One day a sling and hash, feeling so rejected, lightning flash. You get resurrected, make a splash. Now you're in the big army go.
For spiffing up and brooming, cause customers are flocking and business has been booming. We need refrigeration for our new improved display, so we're close for renovation today. Yes, indeed, this is the shop you heard about on Channel 5 News. Yes, the Audrey 2 is on display exclusively here. We're close for decorations, cause fortune has been smiling So now we're due for painting, new plumbing and retiling We'll make a shift to show place of a little shopping then Tomorrow we'll be open again Aren't you finished yet? I'm doing my best, but all these band-aids make it kinda hard You've been getting so much lately I know, it seems like every time I pick up a pair of pudding shears, I slip Gave me a nice place to sleep, under the counter. Nice food to drink, like meatloaf and water. Floors to sweep and toilets to clean, and every other Sunday off. You know, I think you ought to raise the expectations, Seymour. Now that we're getting successful, I mean. Why don't you start with some new clothes? No offense, but what with all the interviews and photo sessions, a big, important experimental botanist has to look the part. I'm not a good, very good shopper, Audrey. I don't have good taste like you. Well, I can help you pick things out. You could? Sure. You'd go shopping with me. Sure. You'd be seen in a public place, like a department store. Sure. Tonight? Oh, I can't tonight. I've got a date. But I'd love to go with you another time. I'm sure I'll pencil you in. So I'll bet you got a lot of dates now, huh? Not dates exactly. A lot of gardening clubs have been calling, asking me to give lectures. Gee. Imagine me giving lectures. I never even graduated grade school. That doesn't matter. You have life experience. Yes, some experience. I don't even know what it's like to fly in an airplane. Me neither. Or eat a fancy dinner at land and sea. Me neither. Or ride a motorcycle. Oh, it's no big deal. And besides, it's dangerous. It is? Extremely dangerous. Gee, I'd better go fix my face. My date will be here any minute. Excuse me, ladies. Which one is 
1313 Skid Row. I'm afraid that information will cost you a dollar. Hey, no problem. Here you go. It's right over there. But if you're like the thousands of others flocking over to see the Audrey 2, you better come back tomorrow, man. The shop is closed today. Ha, <laughs> took his dollar. I'm not here to buy posies, girls. I'm here to pick up my date. Your date? <laughs> you ain't by any chance talking about a girl with a black eye and several other medical problems. As a matter of fact, that's okay. Hey, hey, oh, 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 ladies, ladies, please, I'm friendly. Truce, bottom. You want some nitrous oxide? Why don't you get lost by Talus brains? The last thing Audrey needs is more of your kind. My kind is a very nice kind, ladies. I'm not a monster. What else would you call it? I would call it an occupational hazard. Say what? You see, girls, my line of work requires a certain fascination with human pain and suffering. Whoa! This stuff is great! Allow me to explain. When I was younger, just a bad little kid, my mama noticed funny things I did. Like shooting puppies with a BB gun. I'd poison guppies, and when I was done, I'd find a pussycat and bash in his head. That's when my mama said, What did she say? She said, my boy, I think someday you'll find a way to make your natural tendencies pay. You'll be a dentist. Be a dentist. You have a talent for causing these pain. pain. Son, be a dentist. Son, be a dentist. People will pay you to be in your main. Your temperament's wrong for the priesthood. And teaching would suit you still less. Son, be a dentist. You'll be a success. Here he is, girls, the leader of the plaque. Suck up that gas. Oh my god. Whoa! He's a dentist and he'll never be <laughs> <any good. laughs> You want to teeth them by the Marquis de Sade. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> I'm not numb. Ah, uh, shut up. Open wide. Here I come. I am your dad. And And I enjoy the career that I pick. Oh, whoa. When I start extracting those mothers, you girls will be screaming like a leaf And though it may cause my patients distress, distress, somewhere in heaven above me, I know that my mama's proud of me. Cause I'm a dentist and a sexist. Say ah. Uh. Ah. Say ah. Uh. Ah. Say ah. Uh. Ah. Now spit. I'm fine, thank you, but the uh, shop is closed. I'm not here to shop, I'm here to... Hey, this must be the plane they've been talking about in the news. What do you call it? And Audrey too. Cute name, catchy, nice plan, big. Um, thank you, I raised it myself. Now I'm really not supposed to let... I heard some kind of new species or something? Um, that's what they tell me, but you'll have to leave now. Oh, it's okay, Seymour. This is my boyfriend. Seymour, Orange Scrivello. DDS. I'll tell you something, kid. You say you raised this thing, right? Right. Well, if I were you, I'd sure someone to keep it under a barrel down in a skid row dump like this. This avocado here could be your ticket to the stars. You can bring it to any floor shop in town and name your price. <laughs> Hell, somebody make you a goddamn partner to get their hands on this thing. I don't care. I'm happy here. Seam was very Is loyal. someone talking to you? Oh, no. Excuse me. Excuse me what? Excuse me, doctor. That's better. 
I'm telling you, kid, this thing's a big green gold mine. Get your ass out of this dump and take the plant with you. What? Muchnik Skid Row Flores. It's like a joke. You hear me talking? I hear you. He hears him. Shouldn't we be leaving now? I'm sorry. Sorry what? I'm sorry, doctor. Doctor! Sorry, doctor! <laughs> Gotta train him. Ask that. <laughs> well, my bike to outside in Double Park. But you think about what I said, Scout. I mean it. You think about it. Sure. Sure, I'll think about it. He'll think about it. You do that. Okay, Audrey. You got the handcuffs? They're yeah, right in my bag. Then let's go. He'll think about it. He'll think about it. I don't like that guy, Mr. Mushnick, and you should hear the way he talks to Audrey. God, then him will know the kid just said he'd mull it over. No wonder she looks so unhealthy. It's enough to make you sick. If he left me, if Seymour left me, why then I'd be right back where I started, which was broken, stop it. Sweet and good and beautiful as she is, she deserves a prince, not a sadistic creep like him. Close to bankrupt. What a louse. Be said, be fuddled, and be raft. That's what I'd be if Seymour left. He's a disgrace to the dental profession. Seymour! Sir? Like to be my son. How would you like to be my own adopted boy? I never liked him much before, but count the cats that's in the draw. I've got no choice, I must you must say yes. What for? See what I want to be your dad. I want to see you climbing up my family tree. I used to think you left the sets, but now I see that you're a man, so I'm proposing be my son. Mushnik and son. Sounds great. Nick and his boy chick, you what business will do for FTD? How about it, Seymour be my son? Just say the word, I'll get my lawyer on the phone. Now, Mr. Mushnick, don't be rash. You've always said that I was trash. Oh, I was joking. Sir, I'm choking. Excuse the physical expression of my pride, of the sweet paternal Michigas. I have a hell pent up inside. Gee, so, well, well, I, you, go ahead and say it, Seymour, tell me that you will. Gee, I'd really like to, but I'll hold my breath until. Okay, you win, I'll be your son. Hooray, I win, he'll be my son. Drop the papers that I'm touched, I really am. And when you reach age 83, I'll let you come move in with me. You swear? I promise. What a son. Trouble, sickness, and in health, we share the plant and share the wealth. I'll call my lawyer. Call me son. 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 Mushnick and son. That's that. Officially, I'm your brat. Consider the matter closed and done. Now to the world, let's stick our senior and junior stick through thin and through thick. Sloppy and slick. So come kiss me quick. Please don't make me sick. Mush Nick and Son.
His son. I'm his son. Sudden changes surround me. Lady Luck came and found me. Thanks a million for making the magic you do. Thanks to you, sweet Petunia. Mushnik's taking a junior. And someday when I own this whole shop, I'll remember I owe it to you. Ah, oh, Chewy, who cares if I've been a little on the anemic side these past few weeks? Sort of I had a few dizzy spells, some lightheadedness. It's been worth it, old pal. Well, Chewy, I'm gonna run down to Schmendrick's and get a bite to eat. I'll see you later. Oh boy, here we go again. Look, Chewy, I haven't got much left. Just give me a few more days to heal, okay? And then we'll get started on the left hand again. And then feed me. I beg your pardon. Feed me. Uh, Chewy, you talked. You opened up your trap, your thing, and you said feed me, Crowborn. Feed, feed me now. I can't. I'm starving. Oh boy. Look, how about I squeeze a little more out of this one? I need some food. More, more. But there isn't any more. What do you want me to do, slip my wrists? <laughs> Look, how about I run down to the corner and pick you up some nice chopped sirloin? Must be blood. Chewy, that's disgusting. Must be fresh. I don't want to hear this. Feed me. Does it have to be human? Feed me. Does it have to be mine? Feed me. Where am I supposed to get it? Feed me, Seymour. Feed me all night long. That's right, boy. You can do it. Feed me, Seymour. Feed me all night long. <laughs> Cause if you feed me, Seymour, I can grow up big and strong. You eat blood, Audrey, too. Let's face it. How am I supposed to keep on feeding you? Kill people? I'll make it worth your while. What? You think this is all a coincidence, baby? The sudden success around here? Your adoption papers? Look, you're a plant, an inanimate object. Does this look inanimate to you, punk? If I can talk and I can move, who's to say I can't do anything I want? Like what? Like deliver, pal. Like to see you get everything your secret greasy heart desires. Would you like a Cadillac car? Or a gas shot on Jack Car? That's not a very nice thing to say. 
But it's true, isn't it? No! I don't know anyone who deserves to get chopped up and fed to a hungry plant. Mmm, sure you do. Stupid woman! Christ, what a freaking scatterbrain! I'm sorry, Doctor! I'm sorry, Doctor! Now get the hell out of there and pick up your goddamn sweater, you dizzy cow! Yes, Doctor! Right away, Doctor! I see more. I have my sweater here before! Come on, move it, you little slut! How do you like that stupid dame who forgets her freaking sweater? Christ, if your stupid head weren't screwed on! Aura, oh, that hurt! Move it! If you want a rationale, it isn't very hard to see. Stop and think it over, pal. The guy sure looks like plant food to me. The guy sure looks like plant food to me. The guy sure looks like plant food to me. So nasty, treating her up. Smacking her around, I know he's talking so tough. You need blood, and he's got more than enough. Honey, blood, and he's got more than enough. You Honey, need blood, and he's got more than enough. So go get it. Well, 
he says, well, Seymour, I don't think you understand. Don't be fooled if I should giggle like a sappy, happy dope. It's just a gas. <laughs> it's got me high. But don't let that fact deceive you any moment I can die. <laughs> no, I giggle and I chortle. Bear in mind I'm not immortal. Why this whole thing strikes me funny, I don't know. <laughs> Cause it really is a rotten way to go. What we have here is an ethical dilemma. Lest I help him get the master loot, he doesn't have a prayer. To the gun was never fired, but away if I just fired, I can finish him with simple lazy fair. No. What we have here is a tricky moral problem. Do I help no. remove the master let him go for lack of air? Cause shooting when I tried, but the fates are on my side. I can off the guy by staying in the chair. Don't be fooled if I should chuckle like hyenas in a zoo. It's just the gas. <laughs> it turns me on. But don't let that fact deceive you any moment. I'll be gone. All my vital signs are failing because the oxide I'm inhaling makes it difficult as hell to catch my breath. <laughs> are you dumb? Or hard of hearing, or oh, relieved, my end is nearing. Are you satisfied? I've loved myself to death. Can 
can you hold? Oh yes, sir, we sell roses in pink, red, and white. See one, can you help me with these phones? Skitter's favorite floors, can you hold? More sick and sun, skid row favorite floors, can you hold, please? Name the saying. Flowers for a prompt massage. Flowers for an entourage. Flowers to the funeral home. Reading from St. Andrew's Roman Catholic Church of Ninth and Vine. Forty dollars for the line. First thing in the morning. Fine. We'll be there in the morning. Can you hold? Take my Kleenex, wipe that lipstick away. Show me your face, 
clean as the morning. I know things were bad, but now they're okay. Suddenly Seymour is standing beside you. Don't need no makeup. Don't have to pretend. Suddenly, Seymour is here to provide you sweet understanding. Seymour's your friend. Mama was poor. I'd meet a man and I'd follow him blindly. He'd snap his fingers, me, I'd say, sure. Suddenly, Seymour is standing beside me. He don't give me orders. He took a Last till forever. Tell me the bad times are clean washed away. Please understand that it's still strange and frightening for losers like I've been. It's so hard to say. Suddenly, Seymour. I'm innocent. 
I'm innocent. Then how do you explain this? A picture of a baseball cap? Your baseball cap. The police found it in Scrivella's office, sold it to me, and asked me if I could identify it. Did you? No. They don't suspect you at all, Seymour, but they don't know about the dots, the uniform, the girlfriend. I, I didn't do then it. Come with me to the police station and tell them that. He's got his back so straight. Just so my conscience can rest easy. Sundays at four. TV's first home gardening program. Your makeup and dinner ratings will soar. This is a meek shall inherit. You know the book doesn't lie. It's not a question of merit. It's not the man that's applied. This is a meek gonna get it. And you're a meek little guy. You know the meek are gonna get what's coming to them by. Exciting. Here he is, Mrs. Luce. We found him. He's right here. Oh, my darling, my precious, my sweet, sweet thing. So delighted to make your acquaintance. Ah, uh, cutie. Sweetness. Seymour, baby doll. I like a word with you, lover. I'm sure you know me, the editor's wife. We want your face on the cover of the December 3rd issue of Life. Oh. Yes, the front of the Life magazine. 
Now that's an honor we so seldom grant. Who will send someone down? Let's say Thursday. First shots of you and your beautiful plants. This ain't the me, Sheldon Herbert. You know the book doesn't lie. It's not a question of merit. It's not the man, it's a fly. This ain't the me, gonna get it. And you're a meek little guy. How did you do it? Here he is, sir, the incredible Seymour Quellborn, owner of the fabulous Audrey II, America's most amazing and largest identified plant. So this is Seymour Quellborn. Huh. We've been trying to reach you. Have your lines been busy? Did you get our telegram? I don't think so. Well, it's a good thing I came down here in person. Pleased to meet you, kid. Skip, snip, William Morris Agency. Forget the cable we sent you. It's nice to meet me, the pleasure is yours. Now let my firm represent you. We want to book you on luxury tours. College Campus Rotary Club. The kind of bookings my office can do. Show the plant and talk, answer questions. It's educational lucrative too. My future's starting. I've got to let it stick with that plant in G. My bank account will thrive. What am I saying? No, wait, forget it. It's much too dangerous to keep that plant alive. I take these offers. That means more killing. Who knew success would come with messy, nasty strings? I signed these contracts. That means I'm willing to keep on doing evil, lawful, bloody things. No, no, there's only so far I can bend. No, no, this nightmare must come to an end. No, no, you've got no alternative, Seymour, old boy, though it means you'll be broke again and unemployed. It's the only solution, it can't be avoided. The vegetable must be destroyed. But then there's Audrey. Lovely Audrey. If life were tawdry and impoverished as before, she might not like me. She might not want me. Without my plant, she might not love me anymore. They say the meek shall inherit. Where do I sign? You know the book doesn't lie. Right on the line. It's not a question of marriage. That old fine. It's not a matter, it's a fly. This copy's mine. Some flies. 
But no, you're so particular. Come on, Crowborn, feed me. I ain't eaten since Tushnik, and that was a week ago. Look, just hold off one more night, will you? Life magazine will be here in the morning to take our picture. And then you'll find me somebody? And then you'll never be hungry again. I promise. Chow time, Crowborn! Food! 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 Feed me food! I can't take it! Stop squalling! You're driving me crazy! Shut up, for God's sake! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up. Shut up. What's the matter with you? It's the matter with me. Don't you think I know it needs food? Don't you think I know it'll die if I don't feed it in soon? Don't you think I'm trying to think of something? Some way? Someone? Oh, you're hysterical. What's the big deal about a little plant food? I think running this place all by yourself is too much for you. When did Mr. Mushnick say he'd be back? Huh? You know, in that note you told me he left you. The one that said he was going out to his sister's house in- Czechoslovakia. Right, he could be gone a very long time. <coughs> Audrey, could I ask you something? Anything. Well, just suppose for a minute that there had never even been an Audrey too. That it was a nothing again, a nobody. Would you still like me? I'd still love you, Seymour. Then it's settled. What's settled? <laughs> A gun, and bullets, and rat poison, and a machete! Tomorrow morning after Life Magazine takes our picture, you know who bites the dust. Seymour! Right! They'll snap the photo. We'll be famous. I'll get that TV job and we'll move far away from here. No more knife feedings. No more squalling for blood! Knife feedings? What blood? I don't get it, Seymour! Bullets, knives, rat poison, you're scared of me! There's nothing to be scared of. We'll move to that nice little development you always dreamed about. And once we're there, we'll live happily ever after, I promise. Nice little house, nice little car, and no plants, no plants at all. You're talking so peculiar, Seymour. I'll explain everything to you tomorrow. Just go home now, Audrey, please. I can't leave you in this condition. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about anything. Feed me. Under no circumstances. Feed me. I will not, so stop asking. Feed me. I I'm getting pretty tired of this. Look, how about I run down to the corn you and get you some rare roast beef? Maybe that will hold you over till Life Magazine gets here. Uh-uh, no way. Look, it's my final offer. Yes or no. It's better than nothing. Done? Fine. Great. And don't think you're getting dessert! I couldn't sleep. I took a Somnix. But voices in my head kept saying, Go to see more. Talk to see more. I drank some tea. But she the feeling was Friend and Mushnik, they're right inside. Help! 
Audrey, no! Get off of her! Get off of her! Audrey, are you okay? Yes. No. Audrey, don't die. I need you. Please, please, don't die. You know, the plant just said the strangest thing just now. It said that Orin and Mr. Mushnik were already inside. It's true. I did it. I fed them to it. That's what made it so big and strong and you so famous. I've done terrible things, but not to you, never to you. But I want you to see more. What? When I die, which should be very shortly, give me to the plant so it can live to bring you all the wonderful things you deserve. You don't know what you're talking about. But I do. It's the one gift I can give you. And if I ain't the plant, then I'm part of the plant. So in a way, we'll always be together. You wash my tender leaves. You smell my sweet perfume. You wanna me and care for me. You'll see me bud and bloom. I'm feeling strangely happy now, contented and serene. Interested. Let me explain in more detail. It's a simple uh, licensing deal, you see? We take leaf cuttings, develop little Audrey twos, and sell them to florists all across the nation. Pretty soon, every household in America will have one. I've got a truck waiting outside and some pots, if you don't mind. We'll start taking cuttings right away. Imagine, boy, Audrey twos everywhere. Why, with the right advertising, this could be bigger than hula hoops. Bigger than hula hoops? Much bigger. Every household in America, thousands of you eating. That's what you've had in mind all along, isn't it? Took you long enough. We're not talking about one homie plant here. We're talking about World Conquest. Feed me. You ain't the only thing I ever loved. Too bad. That and that and that and that and that and that and give up, Crowborn. Never here, rat poison. Eat that, eat it, eat it. <laughs> give up, small fry. I may not be able to get you from out here, but in there, in that pot of yours, I'll hack you to bits. Open up, open up.
Mr. Crowborn? Mr. Crowborn? All right, girls. All you have to do is snip the smaller leaves and replant them in those pots. The truck's waiting outside. Thank you. 